Imagine um, something truly alien arriving right on our cosmic doorstep, not just from another planet, but from way beyond our own solar system. For years, decades really, these interstellar visitors were basically science fiction, but now they're making real headlines and uh, they're challenging pretty much everything we thought we knew about space. So today we're doing a deep dive into one of these mysteries, an, an interstellar object called three IETAs. We'll look at Professor Avi Loeb's, well, groundbreaking new classification system, the Loeb scale, and we're going to try and figure out why 3IT has got this unprecedented level four classification. Our mission really is to unravel what makes this thing so incredibly unusual, the scientific debate it's kicked off, and how these findings are genuinely shaking up our cosmic rulebook. Okay, so this idea, this need to systematically evaluate these peculiar visitors, it leads us straight to Professor Avi Loeb, a name I think many of you listening will recognize, Harvard astrophysicist, and he's recently proposed something really novel, the Loeb scale. Now, this isn't just another paper, is it? It feels like a whole new way to think about what might be out there. It really is. The Loeb scale, uh, it's basically a zero to 10 system, mm. a structured framework, which is quite different from how we usually look at celestial objects, its main purpose, to help us sort out what's clearly natural, you know, your average comets, asteroids, that sort of thing, yeah. from objects that show characteristics that maybe, just maybe, hint at an artificial origin. And the motivation behind it is compelling. As our telescopes get better, we're spotting things that just don't quite fit our existing models. This scale gives us a tool, a way to quantify that weirdness, and it prompts us to ask, you know, could this be a techno signature? Right. So if I'm getting this, it's not just about filing away what we already know. It's giving us a structure for tackling things we don't understand yet. But I have to ask, does creating a scale that's specifically looking for artificial stuff risk maybe creating a confirmation bias? Like, could we start seeing techno signatures just because we finally have a box to put them in? That's a really important point. And honestly, it's right at the heart of the debate that's happening now. The scale isn't meant to make us jump to conclusions. Not at all. It's more a systematic way to rank the degree of how strange something is. Level zero or one, yeah. clearly natural. Level 10 would be, well, totally unambiguous, like finding something with made on Zorg stamped on it. Okay, unlikely but clear. Exactly, so the scale encourages rigorous science. It asks, how much more evidence do we need to bump an object up the scale? It forces us to try every natural explanation first, but crucially, it also gives us permission to ask the next question if those natural explanations just don't work. It's really about being open-minded, but within a scientific framework, you know, not just jumping at shadows. I appreciate that distinction. Yeah, that makes sense. It really changes the dynamic, doesn't it? Moves us from just pointing out oddities to having a structured way to evaluate potential breakthroughs. But what really makes this scale come alive is seeing it applied, especially to objects like this one, three eyeless. An interstellar visitor that's turning out to be, well, a lot more than just another space rock. Precisely. And the really crucial thing to grasp about 3i Atlas is its classification on this new scale. According to a 2025 Medium article, Loeb and his colleagues co-authored at 3i Atlas has been given a level four. Level four. And that's significant. It's not saying it's aliens definitively, but it puts it right on that fascinating threshold. It's too weird for an easy natural explanation, but not quite conclusive evidence for an artificial one either. It forces us to seriously consider possibilities beyond our standard astronomical thinking. That level four classification definitely jumped out at me too. What does it actually mean for something to sit right there on that edge? We're not talking about just a minor deviation in its path, are we? What's so perplexing that it pushes past the usual cosmic strangeness? Yeah, you're right, this isn't subtle stuff. One of the big reasons for that level four is its trajectory. It's incredibly unusual. NASA confirmed in 2025 that yes, 3 ILS has a hyperbolic orbit, which for listeners is normal for interstellar objects. It just means they're not tied to our sun just passing through. Okay, standard enough so far. But it's the details of 3 ILS's specific path that make scientists uh, raise their eyebrows. It's not just cruising through. Its motion has these odd characteristics that are really hard to explain just with gravity or, say, known effects like comets releasing gas or radiation pressure. It seems to show some kind of non-gravitational acceleration, mm. a push or pull we can't easily account for. And that kind of deviation, well, it points towards forces or maybe origins that are difficult to square with our standard models of natural things flying through space. So it's not just a quick flyby. It's like something unseen is nudging it, but in a way that doesn't fit the known physics of comets or asteroids. And then there's the spectroscopic data, which uh, for anyone unfamiliar is basically the chemical fingerprint we get by analyzing its light. I looked at that and I was genuinely stumped. 
Tell us about this nickel without iron thing. It sounds like a real head scratcher. Oh, it's a total cosmic mystery, honestly. <laughs> the light signature from 3 ILS shows something really striking. There's nickel present. Okay. But, but critically, there's no detectable trace of iron. No iron at all. None that we can see. And that specific combination, or really the lack of iron where you expect it with nickel, is deeply baffling to conventional astronomy. Usually when we see these elements in space rocks or planets, they almost always appear together, often in specific ratios, because of how stars forge elements or how planets form. In meteorites, right. They're usually full of iron and nickel. Exactly. Think iron-nickel meteorites. <laughs> so the fact that we see nickel but the iron is missing, it's not something easily explained by any natural geological or astrophysical process that we currently understand. So you're saying finding nickel without iron out there is kind of like finding a perfectly formed a stainless steel spoon in a pristine, untouched jungle on Earth. It just mm -hmm. doesn't belong in that natural context. Oh, that's a great analogy, yes. Or finding some kind of refined alloy that simply doesn't occur naturally. This nickel without iron anomaly fits right into Professor Loeb's hypothesis about potential technosignatures. He suggests that maybe, just maybe, such an unusual composition could indicate engineered materials. You know, stuff designed for a specific purpose, not just the random outcome of cosmic processes. Wow. That analogy really drives home how perplexing 3ILS is. It forces that question. Are we looking at some bizarre natural fluke that rewrites astrophysics or something else entirely? Now, for those listeners who follow these cosmic mysteries, you might remember Umua. That was another famous interstellar object made headlines a few years back. How does 3 i Kella stack up against that one? Yeah, that's a really useful comparison, actually because it highlights the jump and just how weird 3 i last seems to be. Yeah. The MOA was definitely unusual. It's weird elongated shape, that puzzling non-gravitational acceleration. People theorized it was outgassing, like a comet, but it was never really proven conclusively. On the lobe scale, Wumua was classified maybe level one or two. So intriguing, but maybe explainable. Right, it indicated his behavior, while odd, was much less extreme than what we seem to be seeing with 3 i Atlas. Wumua sparked a lot of debate, pushed our understanding of comets and asteroids, for sure. But ultimately, many astronomers felt they could find ways to explain its properties through natural phenomena, even if they were a bit exotic. Okay. But 3i Atlas, landing at level 4, represents a significantly higher degree of, well, strangeness. Yeah. It's not just subtly different. It presents these fundamental chemical and trajectory anomalies that are much, much harder to reconcile with any known natural explanations, even the exotic ones. The combination of this weird path plus the truly bizarre chemistry of nickel minus iron, it builds a much stronger case for a really deep investigation, something that pushes us beyond just tweaking our definition of what a natural space rock can be. So Umumu was the cosmic oddball, the weird cousin. But 3 Atlas is more like finding, I don't know, a fully working smartphone just floating out there in the Kuiper belt. It almost demands a more radical explanation. Which brings us to the bigger picture, right? The context of Professor Love's work overall, and this wider scientific debate that discoveries like this inevitably ignite. Absolutely. And it's important to remember, Professor Loeb isn't some fringe figure. We're talking about someone with extensive research background. Over a thousand papers published, an eight index of 131, which, you know, is a standard metric for a researcher's impact. It clearly establishes his credibility in astrophysics. He's a highly respected scientist applying rigorous analysis to these anomalies. It's not just wild speculation. Right. He has the credentials. Definitely. But, and, and this is the crux of it, while his research and hypotheses are laid out meticulously, they do contrast quite sharply with the let's say, mainstream skepticism in the scientific community when you bring up extraterrestrial technology. This isn't settled science, not by a long shot. It's an active, ongoing debate where some deeply ingrained ideas are being challenged. And it's really important for us here to present this information impartially. These are ideas being discussed, debated, challenged within science right now, which leads to a really important question. How should we, as a scientific community, approach these kinds of groundbreaking, potentially revolutionary, but still controversial ideas, especially when the evidence is weird, anomalous, but maybe not quite definitive yet? That really is the million-dollar question, isn't it? On one side, you've got the scientific method demanding extraordinary proof for extraordinary claims. Makes sense. But on the other side, history is full of major breakthroughs that started as extraordinary claims defying the accepted wisdom of the time. It feels like a real tightrope walk between keeping an open mind and demanding that high level of proof, especially when the implications are just 
huge. How do you see the community grappling with this? Does the Lobib scale itself maybe help normalize asking these questions, or does it just deepen the divide? I think it absolutely helps normalize the inquiry, even if it sharpens the immediate debate. Look, the resistance is understandable. Scientists are trained to find natural explanations first. That's the default, and it's a good default. But the Loeb scale gives us a formal, structured language to talk about these anomalies without immediately sounding sensationalist. It carves out a legitimate path for research that maybe in the past might have been dismissed too quickly. By putting a number on the degree of weirdness, it kind of invites more observation, more analysis, rather than just an immediate, nope, can't be. Yeah. It pushes for more objective discussion. So it provides a framework even for skepticism. Exactly. And the stakes are incredibly high, let's be honest. If we mistake mm -hmm. a weird natural thing for something artificial, that's a big scientific error. Embarrassing, sets research back. Mm -hmm. But if we dismiss something genuinely artificial as just another weird rock, we might miss one of the biggest discoveries in human history. So the scale, I think, serves as a really crucial tool for trying to navigate that very, very delicate balance. That's a powerful way to put it. The whole point of science is to challenge assumptions, right? Even our own. And when something comes along that just doesn't fit the boxes we have, it's either a chance to build bigger boxes, refine our models, or maybe, maybe consider entirely new paradigms. And that seems to be exactly what Loeb's work and these perplexing objects like three eye atlas are forcing us to confront. So where does this leave us? We've taken this deep dive into the uh, profound enigma of three eye atlas an interstellar object showing an unusually baffling trajectory, and maybe even more bizarrely, a chemical fingerprint of nickel without the iron we'd expect. These anomalies pushed it to an unprecedented level four classification on Professor Avi Loeb's new scale. That puts it right on that fascinating edge between what we think we can explain through natural cosmic events and what, well, what just might be hinting at something artificial. What would it actually mean if future observations, maybe with even better instruments, either confirm this level four rating or maybe even push 3 i atlas higher up that scale? deeper into the realm of the truly inexplicable. How might a discovery like that fundamentally reshape our entire search for life for intelligence beyond Earth, and maybe change forever how we see ourselves in this vast, apparently surprising universe? It's a question that, uh, for now, just hangs there, mm. tantalizingly, <laughs> waiting for us to keep digging. <laughs>